are at San Diego Comic Con with the Nerds of Color Hard Knock Life. I am once again Keith Chow, and we are crashing uh, a signing here at the Abrams booth <laughs> with Damian Duffy and John Jennings. Welcome, gentlemen, to Hard Knock Life. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Oh, uh, so. Not to bury the lead, you are signing galley copies of Kindred, which is the adaptation of the Octavia Butler novel, graphic novel adaptation. How awesome is it that you guys are working on an Octavia Butler book? Oh, my God. Very. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a great honor, seriously. And we worked very hard on it, and I'm hoping that we did, uh, did the, uh, the narrative justice. Yeah. 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 And I mean, obviously, we want to do well as creators, but really the goal with this is to get more people to know about Butler's work, to engage with it more. Right. And... Yeah, I mean it's it's really kind of interesting that you know, and I, we we talked about this the other day that um, you know there was a, there was a profile in the New York Times about this book about a, a Caucasian author using slavery in science fiction, and mm -hmm. and the profile in the Times was like, this is amazing, no one's ever done this before, right, and you right. guys are like, well, you know, Octavia Butler over here, yeah. right, right, right. you know, how does that make you feel? Well, I mean, you know, it was it's interesting because it seems like the author actually is a huge fan of Octavia yeah, Butler. Yeah, it was yeah. a, it was the way that the Times kind of kind of right. framed it. Uh, framed yeah, it was it. the the Times writer. It was the reporter that yeah, didn't exactly. understand and that. And so what? And we talked about this. What I realized is maybe that the uh, the author didn't understand how much you have to educate people right. about, about the topics, the otherwise fact. they think it's new. Right. Um, because. You know, in a perfect world, everyone would already know who Octavia yeah. Butler is. Yes. Um, you know, she'd be up there with, I don't know, Howard or... Or you know, Arthur C. Clarke. Right, right, yeah, right, right, yeah exactly. Um, but I, I think it's uh, especially hard for, like, a white author to, to understand the level of ignorance some people have right. regarding that, that literary history. Right, right, right. right. No, that's truly. I mean, because there's a whole, like, movement of, like... You know, African American artists, artists from the diaspora, from various standpoints, who are telling these amazing stories. Right. People like Nalo Hopkinson, uh, Sammy Delaney, right. Nadia Korafor, Ayesha Jemai Everett. The list goes on and on, right? And right. all of them are, in some way, own. I mean, owe like their narratives, you know, to to our to right. to um, Octavia Butler's legacy. So, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're, they're Octavia's brood. As Octavia's brood. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is a great book. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> our, with a Walida, our our co-conspirator at Nords of Color too. Yeah. Um, so, um, <clears throat> excuse me. With uh, with this, you know, Afrofuturism is a is a genre, right? Like, it's not it is not unheard of that like that, that black science fiction exists. No, 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 definitely not. Definitely not. This is a term that's been around uh, since the 1990s, actually. Yeah. But I'm thinking like the, the the types of black speculative art that's that's being created has its roots, you know, in the motherland and right. they were brought over, you know, uh, with, with slaves and actually disseminated in various types of narratives and ends up in the Harlem Renaissance. I mean, this is right, something right. that is, you know, part of the culture as far as, like, the idea of imagining a better space. Right. Or, or using or using magical realism and such to, to yeah. deal with social issues. And right. it also grows out of kind of the syncretic nature of African culture That's and right. the way it interacted with, you know, colonialism. Mm -hmm. Right, right, um, right. And that... A lot of it has grown out of those interactions, I think, too. Yeah, it's made made some for some extremely uh, powerful and moving uh, narratives. I mean, uh, creating Kindred uh, uh, at the graphic novel is yeah. it was it was there was an aspect of it that was extremely heavy and traumatizing. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, there were scenes that I was literally like yeah. the original art. Where I'm actually like tears right, on right, the right. page, you know, because it's just like I'm drawing like the scene, yeah. and when every time you draw, you make it more and more real. And we're doing discussions about like, so Damien, what do you, what shade of blue should I use for this bruise? You know that right, kind of thing. Right, it's really right, like, yeah. and it was like, I, is she hurt enough? Is here? she hurt enough? Because you're supposed to feel that she's, yeah. you know, it, because the idea is to make any reader identify with the protagonist, right, right. and really understand that history isn't just something we talk about, but something we still live with every day. Right? Yeah, yeah, it echoes through till now, and that's something that actually is very much a tenet of a like, uh, traditional, like how we think about Afrofuturism as far as like the notion exactly. of cyclical, cyclical time, you know. Oh, and then, and then you know, uh, our fellow at the Nerds of Color, Sean Taylor, he wrote a post a few weeks ago about, yeah. like, yeah. Why, why isn't Octavia Butler's work more uh, regarded outside of, like, you know, the, the core of people who, who are already familiar with it, right? Yeah, that's right. It's not, it hasn't been mainstreamed. It's not, you know, and, and those those books are ripe for, like, adaptation. Oh, my goodness, yes. Yes. Oh, we, we're very excited about that idea, you know, of them turning into other types of media. And we hope that, you know, in some way that we've helped uh, contribute to that. We wanted to be as... Uh, uh, recognizable a name to see an Isaac Asimov, you know. I mean, on the level, yeah. she's already on the level. She was the first, you know, uh, science fiction writer to get the MacArthur Genius Grant. Right, right, know? right, right. So it's like, come on. <laughs> you know? Like, she's yeah. not a nobody. Right, you know right. what I mean? And then it should be treated as like this anonymous author. I mean, it's it's an honor to be able to be uh, 
the first artist to adapt her work into a visual format, but at the same time, it's like, it's 2016, why are we why the first so artist to yeah. do this? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It well, really is. It's, yeah. One thing I, I did want to bury the lead as well, because we are speaking to rarefied air today. Mm. Uh, those of you uh, who know about San Diego Comic Con, it is the home of the Eisner Awards. And we are talking to an Eisner winning author, oh, uh, yeah, John I, Jennings. I appreciate it. Well, I, I, um, I have a winning editor. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, well, I'm, saying. Yeah, I'm just being, I'm just being honest. <laughs> but no, seriously, for this, for the book, uh, the uh, I'm, a co, uh, I'm a co-editor. Um, so Rutgers University Press book. Uh, Francis Gateward uh, is the co-editor, um, and it's called "The Black of the Ink: Constructions of uh, Black Identity and Sequential Art in Comics." And yeah, it won for uh, best uh, academic work in comics for the Eisner's, and it was a total shock. Actually, <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> it was so funny. Still a little like that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still kind of like dreaming? It was still processing it, yeah, because you probably, if you saw my post, I was like, yeah, I dreamed I won it with, we won an Eisner, and, and the award was still there <laughs> when I woke up. So I was like, <laughs> well, that, uh, congratulations Thank on the Eisner. That Thank was you like, you, you know, you came through the BGNOC last night. Yes. And I joke like, where's your Eisner? And you like, bam, right here. Like, it's in my, it's in my backpack. <laughs> So, uh, backpack. Uh, <laughs> and then congratulations on Kindred. When when can we expect the full color hardcover version of the book? Uh, it goes on sale January tenth, two thousand seventeen. Right. And then that's like you said, it's a full color, full color hardcover, hardcover with the um, dust jacket. You know, yeah, very excited about it. So yeah, yeah. We, we'll be looking at color proofs probably next week. Our awesome, can't yeah. wait. So um, thank you, Damien. Thank, thank you, you, John, for joining yeah. us. Thanks, Keith. Uh, thank you for tuning in to another Hard Knock Life from San Diego Comic Con. We'll uh, be back with more stuff. Talk to you later. Awesome, man. Thank you. Well, it's the NOC. In full color, you see me? The hard knock life. Comics, movies, and TV. Yeah. Pop culture with a different perspective. Watch it on your screen. Hit play, so check. This is the hard knock life, but not the chick of kind. More like the people in the world seeking perspectives with a